healing, prosperity, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us now. It's your season. It's your time. Hear and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Hey everyone, and welcome to the One Touch Ministry broadcast with myself, Pastor Shannon Young, and with Prophetess Nidetra Young. How are you feeling on today? I'm feeling amazing. God bless everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yes, and so I'm so glad that you guys are here with us and remember to join us every single Friday afternoon at 1 30 p.m. where you're going to receive a mighty powerful move of God a word from God and I'm telling you today it's not going to be any different because I'm continuing part two of I believe God yes I believe God. You know, when I was listening to your message, it really blessed my heart because, you know, I know sometimes we all struggle with faith. Yes, I even struggle with my faith because sometimes it just does not look like it's going to happen. Yes. And because we don't see it in front of us, we assume that God has what? Forgotten about us. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you something. I truly believe that God has something great for you. And not only that, you got to remember that the promises of God is mm. yes and, and amen. amen. That is so true. So I'm so excited about today's message. And y'all know that my wife, she, she's a singer. She's a wonderful <laughs> singer. And she's an artist. So shameless plug. Make sure you pick up her EP, The yes. Journey. Glory to God. And it's on every single major platform. Yes, it is. And anything else that you would like to greet the people with? Oh, I also want to let you know that we also have a t-shirt line and it's called Love. Because ladies and gentlemen, we need to show each other just a little bit more love. Trust me, it works. <laughs> yes, that is so true. So we're going to prepare for this message and then just enjoy just a little bit of this clip. And we'll be right back with you. We want to share with you, yeah, and your family, family, the love of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in our streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives. Hey, God bless you, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning back in to our broadcast. Again, I am Pastor Shannon Young, and it is a pleasure to be sharing the Word of God with you on today. So today, I'm going to be doing part two of I Believe God. And you just need to pick up your phone, call someone, text someone. And just say, I believe God for supernatural miracles to come about in my life on today. Our scripture reference is coming from um, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, uh, beginning at verses 23 and 25 is where I'm getting my thought from. And it says here... <clears throat> For last night an angel of the Lord, to whom I belong, and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Don't be afraid. And let me just stop right there really quick and let you know, in this time and in this season in your life, there may be some things that may be coming up against you, some things that uh, are really pushing 
you make make you feel like that you know hey um just not feeling it i'm just not you know whatever the case may be but it's bringing about fear the bible says that god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind so paul is saying here don't be afraid well god, well god this is god the angel of the lord telling paul don't be afraid i was just encouraging you here uh saying don't be afraid paul for you will surely stand a uh, trial before caesar what more uh what's more god in his goodness has granted you safety to e um, safety to everyone selling with you for or so take courage for i believe god he uh, will be just as he said now that's coming from the new living translation here so on today i'm just taking that little verse of scripture it says i believe god now there are some things that i have been believing god for some things personally as far as ministry wise some things uh personally in my life some things that me and my wife have been believing God for. And it seems like that those things are not going to happen or not happening real soon. They're not happening in the timing that we feel like that it should be happening in. But the Bible says this. The Bible says to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And so on today, I'm here to encourage your faith on today to say, trust in God, believe in God, believe in, believe on those things. The Bible tells us that the things that are seen are temporal, which means they are subject to change. But the things that are not seen, those things are eternal. And so even on today, as we were listening to, um, or this past Sunday, when we was listening to our pastor preach, talking about, hey, I'm waiting for my transfer. You see, because there's things, there's riches, there's things that's laid up in heaven that God said that he has promised to you. And because he's promised those things to you, that it's just waiting for it to be transferred from heaven to earth. The Bible says um, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What are those things? Those things that you've been praying for. Maybe it's a, uh, a loved one that is hurt. Hey, I just got a report that one of my family members uh, just recently got hurt. He was doing some work and it seems like that he may have gotten shocked, uh, electrocuted, fell off the top of the house, and, and, and he hit the floor and they had to call 911 and everything. And so from my understanding, he is doing all right. But it's by the grace of God that you know something worse didn't happen. But I believe God that everything is going to be all right. Uh, maybe uh, maybe you're sick maybe you're not feeling well uh, and so you know the doctors are saying that there's nothing they could do in your situation but there is a God that has the healing balm of Gilead and he's waiting to hear from you to reach out to heaven and say God I believe you on today for healing to take place in my body there's just a couple of scriptures here that I wanted to go through since we're talking about healing in the Bible. I mean, healing in the body. Um, you already know about the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood heard about Jesus. And she made up in her mind and said, only if I can touch the hem of his garment. I shall be made whole. In, in the S.E. Young translation, which is my translation, I will say that she will just keep repeating in her mind that if I can only have one touch from the master's garment, I know that I could be made whole. And in the scripture in Mark chapter 5, 
um, verses 35 <clears throat> through 41, again, the New Living Translation. It says here, so this is the miracle that happened after the woman with the issue of blood. It said, uh, when, he, uh, when he was still speaking to her, talking about the woman with the issue of blood because, you know, um, she, she touched the hem of his garment. He said, I felt virtue come out of me. Which means that he felt somebody's faith, and then because of that faith touching just the hem of his garment, he felt virtue, he felt healing power leave out of him. And then as he was, as he was t uh, telling, the young lady said, listen, uh, your faith has made you whole. So as he was speaking to her, the Bible says that Jesus heard here, while he was speaking to her, messengers arrived from the, home, from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. There, there is no use troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Again, that's, <laughs> you see the pattern here that's happening? The angel of the Lord told Paul, don't be afraid because although you're going to end up being shipwrecked, you and your crew, they're going to go down, but nobody's going to lose their life. Here it is again. That Jesus, now Jesus is saying, don't be afraid, just have faith. That right there tells me, hey, don't be afraid, believe God. So, don't, don't be afraid, just have faith. Then Jesus uh, stopped the crowd and wouldn't let anyone except, except Peter, James, and John, the brother of uh, James, when they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing. So they had already, you know, in them, they was like, hey, listen, she didn't already die. She's gone. Her life has expired. So, you know, so back in those days, um, you know, the people actually hired professional mourners. People will cry over people's death. And so when they arose, they had people who were already crying and weeping and wailing for this child uh, they had already done. He went inside and asked, why all this commotion? Why all this weeping? The child isn't dead. She's only asleep. Now that right there should just stir up something right there on the inside of you because there has been some dead situations. There has been some dead things that's on the inside of you. There has been some dead relationships um, that you know that you want God to allow it to be able to rise up again. But God said, hey, those things are not dead. They're only sleeping. There's some dreams that you feel like have died out. God is saying to you, they're only sleeping. There's some passion, some desires that you have that you know that you want to accomplish. God is saying today, they're only sleeping. And the next part right here, um, it was very interesting. So I'm going to read it from the New King James Version, but I like uh, from the New Living Translation, but I like the way the King James Version says. It says here that the crowd laughed at him. In the King James Version, I'm going to just pull that up really quick. This is Mark 5. Uh huh. Mark chapter 5. What verse is this? Because I like the way the King James says it. I really want y'all to see this.
Uh huh. Child is only sleeping. This is verse 40. King James Version. <laughs> this is here. And they laughed him to scorn. <laughs> they laughed at him so bad. They laughed at Jesus so bad. They laughed him to scorn. I mean, they just went like, <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Woo, you are. Woo. No, I mean, these. that means that these people literally bawled over cracking up. I mean, they was like, ah, uh -huh. yo, this guy's nuts. He's a fool. You know, th this woman is, this little girl is dead. What? What do you mean she's sleep? I mean, they laughed him to scorn, embarrassed him. How many people laughed at your vision? How many people laughed at your dream? How many people laughed at your invention? How many people laughed because you dropped out of school and you decided to go back to school at 35 years old, at 40 years old? How many people laughed at you and was just like, you're an idiot? How many people laughed at your situation said girl you should have left him a long time you know that he ain't no good how many people said now you know that your baby mama I, I, I mean I'm talking they done laughed you laughed at you so bad it said that the crowd laughed at him but he made all leave. And he took the, the girl's father and mother and his three disciples into the room where the girl was lying. See, you don't need a whole bunch of people around you for your miracle to happen. Your circle of friends really just need to be a few folks around you. Because the Bible says this. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Baby, I can't see it right now, but I can guarantee you that I believe God that is going to come and is going to happen. I don't want to surround myself. Don't you surround yourself, uh, young man. Don't you surround yourself, uh, young lady. Don't you surround yourself, man of God. Don't you surround yourself, woman of God, with those people who don't have faith and they laugh you to scorn about your dream. Laugh you to scorn about your vision laugh you to scorn and tell you that sound like the dumbest thing i ever heard in my life i'm here to tell you that the bible says this in the book of habeca to write your vision and make it plain it doesn't mean that it's going to happen today it doesn't mean that it's going to happen tomorrow. But I guarantee you this. The Bible says, write the vision. Make it plain so that when you see it, you can run with it. Though it tarry. That means though it, it, it might take some time to happen. Let me tell you something. One Touch Ministries was not, was not built overnight. <clears throat> this is 12 years of ministry even more in the making but 12 years is how long one touch ministries has actually officially been an organization i myself have been preaching since may 23rd 1999 which means that <clears throat> one touch ministries was something that god gave me 
years ago and was able to birth it. And there's some still some things that's tearing. But see, I have to say this. I see myself in the future and things are looking a whole lot better. I may not be where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. I really could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. No one would have known anything about a pastor, Shannon Young. But I'm here to tell you that God has great things like for you. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, we read this last week, but I just want to tell you it again. He says, I know the plans that I have towards you, saith the Lord, a plans of good and not of evil to bring you a hope and an expected end. They may have laughed you to scorn. Ha <laughs> ha. That ministry isn't going to go nowhere. That ministry starts off, sounds dumb. Who has church in their house? That right there is the craziest thing I've ever had. Your ministry will never grow. You need a building because nobody's coming to church. Nobody's coming to no house. Let me tell you something. Write the vision. Make it plain. So that when you see it, because when I wrote the vision for One Touch Ministries, and actually when I laid it out to my wife when we got married, she didn't see the vision. But now, my wife can tell you the vision of the church better than I can. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, they may laugh you to scorn, but watch this. You only need a few clouds of witnesses of people to come around you to have the same kind of faith, the same kind of supernatural faith that you have. And so what Jesus did, he held out his hand to the young girl and she said, he said, little girl, get up. Listen, I only have a few more minutes here, but I want to encourage somebody to say, get up. Man of God, get up, woman of God, get up, young man. I'm telling you, you're here today that it's time for you to come out of that ditch, to come out of that place that the enemy had you held down and held you bound. I know that there's been times where you have been oppressed and you have been de uh, under depression, but God has said it's time for you to come out of that depression. It's time for you to come out of that hopelessness. It's time for you to get up in the name of Jesus. He said it's time for you to get up. How are you going to get up? You got to believe God. You have to have faith, trust, believe in God. I'm going back to my scripture on Matthew 16, 13 through 19. And if you haven't heard last uh, two weeks ago message, I tell you to go to our YouTube channel. You can check out uh, I Believe God Part 1. Uh, but listen here. It says here, when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea in Philippi, uh, he asked the disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? I'm going to read this from the King James Version. I'm actually quoting this to you <laughs> verbatim from the Bible, but I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Um, and it says here, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they say, some say that you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. He said to them, who do you say that I am? And Peter, and Peter answered and said to him, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it, unto you but my father which is in heaven and I say unto you that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and I'll give unto you 
of the keys to the kingdom of heaven. For whatever shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Listen, I have three minutes. I'm going to break this down to you as quickly as possible. Continuing from last week. Listen. Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is heaven. At that time, it had never been revealed that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. It has never been revealed. He never told anybody. If you go back in, in the Bible, I believe it's Isaiah, uh, but I have to check that verse, so don't quote me on that. But Jesus, as a kid, he went up, grabbed a scroll, and read the part of the scripture on a scroll that said um, that... Uh, God has anointed me to preach the gospel to set the captives free. He rolled it up, uh, slammed it down. He said, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. Ears. Again, this is the S.E. Young translation. Go check it out for yourself. And so the people, the, the, the people that heard this in the synagogue was like, who is this joke? Who is this kid? Who is this? Jesus at that time had let them know that the Messiah had come. You still have Jewish people who do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. That's the problem with most religion is because they believe Jesus was somebody here on earth and was a great prophet, but they don't believe in the deity of Christ. You have to believe in the deity of Christ. And he said, once you believe and once you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, whatever you shall bind on earth, um, it says here, uh, for whatever you forbid on earth shall be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth shall, uh, will, whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. We have to be able to take control. We got to take authority over our lives. We have to take over and take hold of the own horns of the altar. We have to be able to say, listen, I bind, you know, the spirit of depression. I bind fear. I bind uh, 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 low self-esteem. But when you bind that stuff and when it goes out of you, you have to fill it with something else. Fill it with power. Fill it with love. Fill it with, fill it with the Holy Spirit. I'm here to tell you today, my brothers and my sisters, that you have to believe God for your situation. You have to believe God for your circumstance. And just like, I'm going to wrap this up. I only have a few seconds here. It says here that Paul said, hey, listen, we are going to make it. Ha, huh? my God, we're going to make it. I need you to believe God that we're going to make it to land. We're going to lose this ship, but we're going to make it to land. And when they became shipwrecked, some grabbed onto the broken pieces of the ship and they began to swim to the island. I'm here to encourage you on today, my brother and my sister, to grab on to the word, grab on to faith, grab on to something that's going to allow you to make it to land because you can't be afraid. You can't be afraid. You have to believe God. So Father God, I pray for these, your people, oh God. That, Father God, that you will take out the spirit of fear out of them, fill them with power, fill them with love. Give them a sound mind right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.